Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, just want to welcome you guys. My name's David Martell. Uh, I'm from the sales team here at Day Smart Appointments, and I'm joined by Eric Berg from NemoQ. And uh, we're just really excited to have you guys join us today. Um, this is something that we've been working on for a while now, the, the relationship between our two companies. And uh, so we just wanted to extend an invitation out to all of you to, to kind of tell you about what we've got going on. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Eric and then we'll, we'll just kind of talk through this and we've got some space dedicated for Q and a at the end of this, but if you guys have questions during the, the presentation, feel free to put them in chat and we will address them. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad to be here as well, David. Thanks for, uh, teeing that up for me. And I'll start by just giving you guys a little bit of information about Nemo Q, what we do, and we'll kind of, uh, wrap it up on how this strategic partnership um, works together towards the end. So just a little bit about us. Uh, we've been in the queuing industry, queue management systems for close to 40 plus years now. Um, and we have not been a fly by night company. We've seen it all. Uh, and, you know, we mainly do most of our business uh, in four verticals. I would say the government space, healthcare, retail, and a lot of higher education. Um, so without further ado, we'll get into a little bit more about what it is that we do. So uh, there is a problem that exists for every single business that cannot be avoided, whether you provide a good or a service, and that is going to be people needing to get in line for your service. Um, and that can lead to very long actual physical lines or frustrated customers, uh, especially when there's not any kind of transparency on how long they could possibly be waiting. And this is you know, un an unavoidable problem. Um, and people could end up leaving your office or business frustrated even, and then take to social media, word of mouth, and, and take even more business away from you. Um, so what we are going to need to do now is implement some, some form of order to that chaos, um, and that is going to be a queuing solution. So the short and skinny of what a queuing solution is, is that it decreases your wait times. That is gonna be the ultimate goal. Um, we are able to have you go through a streamlined process where you check in, um, with a kiosk or some sort of greeter, and you get that sense of order, right? When you're, whether you're checking in for an appointment or you're going through a list of screens and selecting what it is that you're coming in for, uh, you know, you're like, okay, these people understand what's going on here and I'm gonna be handled appropriately. Um, and we also provide that, that transparency that people are looking for. You know, you'll be able to see, well, how long is the wait time? How long am I expected to be here? Um, and then we are also able to match you up with a customer service representative or employee with the correct skill sets. Um, and so what this does is this transforms the overall customer experience. You know, they they are given not only a more a more pleasant experience, but also, you know, your employees um, experience is going to be transformed as well. They're going to have the right people coming, um, you know, to them to be serviced. And we're going to create a more efficient office, if you will. Um, and so, like I said, the main goal here is going to be to decrease the wait times um, and, and leave people with a positive taste in their mouth. Um, so, yeah, so that's going to be the benefits. And then where NemoQ does fall short, um, and this kind of entered day smart here with our partnership, is while we can, you know, do a lot with the workflow for the walk-ins, uh, we cannot change the fact that there are going to be some very, very busy peak walk-in times, the lunch rushes, the, you know, after work um, where, where people tend to do these sorts of things. And that's where, you know, we need some help distributing that traffic throughout the day. Thanks, Eric. Um, well, yeah, I'll start with a little bit of background on DaySmart here. So, you know, we're, we're an industry agnostic scheduling company. And what that means is, you know, we are, unlike a lot of our competitors, our software is not designed to solve around one specific industry. Um, instead, we've created a very flexible solution that can really be applied across use cases and industries and even business sizes as well. Um, but there, there's, you know, clients approach us for a lot of different reasons, but one of the main reasons that they come to us is um, they have a lack of operational insight, uh, you know, into the needs of their, their business from like a staffing and resourcing perspective. Uh, you know, a lot of times if we're talking to operational folks, um, they just know that their teams are stressed, that everybody's busy. There doesn't seem to, to be enough bandwidth. 
Um, and you know, they think that by implementing some sort of scheduling solution into that space, they can kind of create a little bit more structure and process and help give them the insight that they need so that they can plan accordingly. Um, and just for as an example, speaking to the industry agnostic piece of that, some of the clients that we've worked with where you know we're really dealing with operations folks are uh, airports, DMVs, uh, plasma donation centers, automotive services, really across the board. Um, you know, if, if every business is a little bit different, sometimes operations are going to be kind of at the front of the line with having their voices heard as far as what their needs are. Sometimes it's going to be marketing personnel or sales folks. It's typically the operations people are the ones who come to us and say, hey, I, I need to be able to staff appropriately here. Uh, and so I, I need to get these appointments scheduled in advance and uh, be able to, to kind of plan my staffing around that. So we deploy a self-service online scheduling solution. And, you know, Eric talked about giving the customers a sense when they walk in and they check into Nemo Q, it gives them a sense of these people you know, they're going to be able to handle my need appropriately. Like when you check into that queue, you have that kind of sense of confidence. We view appointments in the same way, but as, as kind of starting a little bit earlier in the process, but it's really about guaranteeing that sense that this company or this organization is going to be able to handle my needs as a consumer. Um, so we come in and we, we deploy that solution. The immediate impact is, you know, overnight, the data starts being captured about, what the you know what's the demand for your organization's resources it, it it's not always the case that our clients are able to utilize that data overnight but we do start capturing it overnight a lot of times we we get the solution in place and then you know it may take a few weeks or months or in some cases years for our clients to really feel like they have really nailed down everything that they can do with that data to impact their organization and their customers. Um, but it's really it's really a powerful overnight impact on the business. Um, so the benefits of that, again, you know, like I said, they may not see this right away or, or be able to, to, to act on this immediately. But what this allows is it allows them to see demand. How many staff are they gonna need during what times? Do they need special resources to, to you know, facilitate certain services, things like that? really allows them to set that structure up so that they have are able to move customers through the process seamlessly uh, and not have people, you know, clogging up their lobby. And then, you know, like Eric mentioned, the gaps, <laughs> appointments scheduled in advance are great. And, you know, for me as a consumer, it does give me confidence that I can plan my day around that appointment. I know what to expect. I know they're going to be, you know, expecting me. However, there's still going to be walk-ins in any business. There's going to be, maybe you're turning them away, but they're still going to try to come and walk in. And most folks don't turn them away. Uh, and then also some appointments are going to finish sooner than others. So you're going to have staff that are potentially sitting around with downtime between, you know, there's a gap where the next appointment, that person hasn't arrived yet. Well, if you, you know, we'll talk about this here on the next slide here, but if you have appointments paired with queuing, you can allow that walk-in traffic and seamlessly combine it with the appointments. And so now we'll talk about what this actually looks like in practice. This, this is really an overview of this partnership that we've developed here. And the exciting thing about this for us, you know, we've actually worked with NemoQ in the past. Um, we've had, I think, a few clients years ago um, that used us for some use cases. I think the biggest one was um, a, a client that was operating under some sort of special mandate from a government. It had, it had a timestamp on it. It expired, but we've worked with these guys in the past. Um, sorry, here. Oh, no, I thought I had a question. Um, so this just kind of made sense for us because we'd done this, but um, we we said, okay, how do we how do we expand our offering? And NemoQ was, I think, in a similar place. So the process really starts with, you know, you're offering that appointment online to the consumer, or they're calling in. Either way, they're booking that appointment in advance. Um, at, at the time that that appointment's booked, they are sent a confirmation email, maybe a text as well, and that has a confirmation number. Um, so again, it gives them that guarantee that they're going to be handled appropriately. And it also gives them that confirmation number, which as Eric will talk about here, comes into play throughout the rest of the process. Yeah, absolutely. Dave kind of teed it up there for me. So 
um, this is kind of where the overview of the process starts and, and we've definitely had some success with this. So yes, you will need some kind of confirmation number for the, the people who plan ahead and make appointments um, as many of us should do more often. Um, and, and when you come into the, the office, you're gonna need to have that, uh, that confirmation number with you. Um, you're then going to need to present that number either at a kiosk or to some kind of greeter or receptionist to verify that you actually showed up and honored your appointment, which is important um, because people who don't show up and honor their appointments, um, you know, it does happen. And so if you don't check in, then we can reduce the number of no-shows uh, in those scenarios. So once you've checked in, you know, you've gone through the day smart portion of things. Um, they've captured what it is that, you know, you've needed to come make your appointment for whatever service that may be. Um, and that's tied to that booking number or confirmation number. And so we place you uh, into the correct queue within the NEMO queue system. Uh, but then the big question mark still looms, what are we going to do with the people who didn't plan ahead and make that appointment? What about those walk-ins at the lunch rush or, or after work? Um, this is where the, the partnership really thrives. So uh, those people will still be able to use the check-in process. Uh, they just won't have a booking number to enter. So when the screen comes up, did you book an appointment? They'll simply say, you know what, I didn't. Um, and they'll still have that sense of confidence that we're talking about because they will be able to go through a list of services that are offered and select what it is that they've come into the office for, um, giving them the sense that, you know, they're going to be handled by the, the correct representative and, and someone's going to uh, meet their needs. And so all this basically just leads to, uh, you know, a reducement of employee waste time. Um, we're really filling in those gaps where, where appointments aren't being made. Um, we're able to not turn away those walk-ins uh, and, you know, we're, yeah, we're keeping things moving. Um, so, yeah, we just wanted to kind of cover like big picture. I know for a lot of organizations, a transition if you're using something you know we, we work with some folks who are using pen and paper still uh, it's actually a lot more common than I think I would expect when you go out into the yeah. marketplace to see people who you know they're still writing stuff down on an Excel spreadsheet uh, that's printed out and so the, a transition to a system like this especially when you're really looking at two pieces of technology can sometimes I think seem overwhelming um, and so, you know, we wanted to talk about the big picture, like, you know, what are the benefits here? And then later on, when we get into Q&A, we can, um, you know, talk a little bit about what does this actually look like for your organization um, to, to take this step. But on the day smart side, a big focus for us is always being available to your customers. You know, your the doors to your lobby and for most businesses are not open 24 seven. You don't have staff there to help people around the clock, but your business or your organization still in today's world needs to be available 24 7 that's what customers expect uh, and so that's probably our, our first and, and primary goal from you know that that customer experience piece is making your business available to the consumer around the clock uh, and then the, the next piece is that appoint, appointment preparedness you know you're available to them 24 7 they're booking 24 7 uh, how do you communicate with them in advance um, so that they know what to expect what to bring and then also you know, planning, how do you, just like you're communicating to them, how are you going to plan from your staffing side? And, and that's where our software has, uh, you know, again, I talked about the industry agnosticism of our application and how we've really built this, this really flexible tool. And part of that is enforcing what we call scheduling rules around your appointments. You know, maybe you want to let your customers schedule in the middle of the night, but not for 6 a.m. the next morning. That doesn't give you any bandwidth to plan. So maybe, you know, you, you we say they can schedule whenever they want, but there's a, a you know 48 hour gap where they can't schedule. They can only schedule starting three days in the future. Or maybe it's the reverse of that. You only want to let people schedule for two days. Really totally up to you. Our system is designed to allow you to configure it with you know our assistance and our, our help from a, a training and implementation standpoint to meet your specific needs of your organization. Yep, absolutely. Um, so another thing that I wanted to talk about with the NEMOQ side of things and uh, is mostly just the customer experience, right? We all have had bad experiences going into these businesses and the, the day smart side of things. And then ultimately the NEMOQ side of things when you enter the business is sometimes, you know, 
the face of your business, right? This is uh, their first experience with you. Um, and, and you want them it to be a smooth one and, and you want them to leave feeling um, satisfied. So that's going to be first and foremost. And that trickles down into the employee experience as well. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, the ultimate goal is uh, to decrease these in-office wait times, especially for these walk-ins that are coming in so that they still have a secure place in line and they're st still able to be seen. Um, one thing I did not touch on earlier, that's another very important piece of the, the walk-in and Nemo queue process that we provide is going to be uh, capturing some of these analytics. Um, more, more importantly, we're gonna be able to see how long people at these walk-in and, and different queues are waiting for once they've actually you know, gotten onto site. Um, and then how long they're spending with your customer service representatives. Um, so what are those throughputs for specific employees and, and things like that? Um, and I think we have some questions that we that might be that might come up that we can go ahead and answer um, here for you guys before we get into your guys's questions. Um, and and one question that we always get is why is that appointment or confirmation number so important? Um, and why does it come to me in a text and an email and, and I have to hold on to it? And that's going to be because um, checking in for your appointment is a big piece of of our side of things. Um, you know, that lets the Nemo Q system know what you're there for, right? So you can be connected to an employee with the correct skill sets. Um, and it also is going to decrease the number of no shows or abandonment. Um, and then employees won't, you know, waste time calling forward people who never bothered to show up in the first place. Um, second most common question is going to be how is that appointment and walk in traffic blended? Um, and of course, appointments for the planners, they're always going to take priority. You know, we always want to try to honor that appointment time as best as possible, um, but we still want to be as efficient as possible. Um, so anytime somebody's waiting for an appointment to come in or, or doesn't have somebody to service, um, enter the walk-ins. And so Nemo Q's, uh, the logic built into that system is able to do that. Thanks, Eric. You just said something that uh, I hadn't thought about before, but, you know, from the appointment scheduling side of things, a big benefit is to reduce the number of no-shows through the notifications that go out to folks, you know, the, the emails, text messages, and we have all that. But again, you know, one thing that for, for our from our perspective, those reminders and notifications help to reduce the no-shows, but you still get no-shows. No and really at that point, like the appointment scheduling application can't really do anything about that the next you know someone misses their 9 a.m the next appointments at, at you know 9 30 that 30 minutes now is potentially being unused unless you have a system like this that can say okay let's divert over to the walk-in line and now now we've got that resource that staff member is able to stay busy keep that throughput up uh, until that 9 30 appointment arrives um, right and let's really face it not everybody um, is going to be rescheduling or canceling their appointment when they can't make it. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. unfortunately. Um, so uh, one question that we get a lot uh, on the day smart side of things is, can the scheduler be integrated into my existing website? Um, and the answer is yes. And there's really kind of two ways we go about that. So we actually have what we call an out of the box mm -hmm. customer interface. So um, that, that really covers all of the scheduling process that I would say 99% of clients need as, as like kind of a baseline to get the scheduling out on the web, on the internet so that, that their customers can schedule appointments for themselves. Uh, and that's available to all of our clients, no additional cost. it's just a part of our application. Um, but we also have a really powerful API and I apologize this is really, we're gonna kind of speak to the more of the, uh, of, let's say the nerdier group out there, but it, this API, uh, basically, this is what the partnership between NemoQ and DaySmart Appointments is built on, is our, our application has this API that can allow NemoQ's system to reach out and talk to our system and tell us, you know, say, hey, here's this person, they've just checked in and, and the NemoQ kiosk with the DaySmart Appointments confirmation number we're, we're here, we see them, we're gonna check them in, we're gonna update the status of their appointment so that it's captured in that system as well as the Nemo Q system. And that API is very flexible and it actually allows our clients to really kind of create a custom personal scheduling uh, solution on their own website. And we have a lot of clients that do this. They'll build you know, the, the 
uh, service and date and time picker, rather than sending them to us to that out of the box solution I mentioned, they'll build that all into their website. And, and you know, we have a team of people here that kind of talk those clients through, hey, here's how most folks use this. Here's some examples. Uh, here's the process you go through to get that set up and working. And that way you're keeping that consumer, that customer on your website, you know, in, in your kind of brand experience that entire time uh, and from start to finish. And then, you know, up, and that, that wraps up, I think, you know, when they come in and check in at the kiosk again, you know, in your location. Um, the next question is, you know, where, where do I go if I want to learn more? So if you're really interested in kind of the, the joint uh, product solution here, we've got some links on this last slide. And, and I think uh, Chase, who's in the background here, he'll, he'll put some stuff in the chat uh, as well. But you can talk to either one of our organizations. I think NemoQ, you know, from an implementation standpoint, a lot of times the, que the queuing system, I think, is, is probably a, a little bit more um, to set up. Eric, correct me if I'm wrong there, but just because there's there's physical hardware involved there a lot of times. Um, uh, so I would say most of those conversations, if you're looking at both solutions, probably start on the Nemo Q side. Uh, you know, if you just want appointments, obviously we're happy to talk to you guys at the DaySmart side as well. Yep. And uh, for those of you who are looking for maybe a little less daunting of, of an implementation process, we can do it without hardware as well. Um, but you know, we can we can use some sort of receptionist or virtual greeter in some cases, so we can you know do it with no hardware at all. But all right. And then what does this partnership mean for you? Well, you know, as I said, we're really excited about this. We've seen success years ago, uh, you know, I guess for a little bit more detail that that uh, client that we worked in, I think where we first met in EMOQ was um, mm -hmm. a large, uh, let's say, government uh, interest on, on the West Coast. And they had a project for a couple of years where they needed queuing and appointments. Um, and, and, you know, the, the impact there, I think, was pretty significant. In being in the um, you know public sector, they didn't have a, a bottomless uh, you know coin purse to dip into and go hire a bunch of people. They kind of were limited in their resourcing, um, and so they really had to be efficient and creative uh, to solve those problems. And I think that they found you know by by deploying a solution with appointments and queuing, they were really able to operate within their the bounds of their resources and provide an experience that the public was was really satisfied with. Um, and then, you know, where we move into today, Eric, you can probably talk to this some, but where we see a lot of success is in, uh, you know, DMB, uh, Department of Transportation use cases, things like that. There's some medical use cases that really benefit from this as well. But um, I, I think from the day smart side of things, what this means for your organization is, you know, more insight and planning capability from the appointments. And then Eric, I don't know if you want to speak to, you know, what it means kind of on the day to day from the queuing side, what that impact is. Yeah. So it's, again, um, I think you hit the nail on the head a second ago. Um, there's really, you're going to get the most bang for your buck here as far as efficiency goes. Um, on the queuing side of things, um, a big thing is going to be that efficiency of matching people up, knowing what they're here for in advance, things like that, being able to pre-plan um, and then having that actionable data on the back end to dip into and, and sometimes see you know, results within days, even weeks of how you can improve those, those interactions and efficiencies um, within your office workflow. So, and we're really excited about the partnership and we've seen great success with it already. Yeah, yeah, you, we, uh, I, I we really kind of kicked things off here, I think about a month, month and a half ago. Um, and we've already got some organizations, some clients that we're helping together. And it's just been awesome to see that early adoption there and really excited to, to hopefully bring this to the masses. So it's kind of a no brainer, right? Yeah, it I mean, really is. Yeah. It's, it's a wonder we weren't working together before this. So yeah. Um, it's, yeah, if, if you need, if, if you need to overall improve your efficiency from, their side of things where people can book and plan ahead um, and you still want to to keep things moving and have those walk-ins still not be turned away um, this is the match agreed well we i got, think that's we got some questions that came okay. through the the chat part I'll, I'll throw those out to you guys if you can answer them um so the first one was sent out a couple slides back but it asked is this taking place of the existing appointment queue or to be used in conjunction with what already exists? 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what you think, Eric. That sounds almost like a, a question from an existing Nemo Q client. Uh, yeah, that would be. So this would, so we have on our back end of things, we have what we would mark as an appointment queue. It's just some logic that helps our queuing system know who made an appointment and, and who did it, who's there as a walk-in. We kind of differentiate the two within the system. So this would still um, be your appointment queue, so to speak. Um, that is how we differentiate the, the two. Hopefully so it's kind of that question. It, it's it, it sounds to me, Eric, from what I understand of how you guys have done things in the past, it's it's kind of checking the boxes that you guys had checked in the past, plus some other features and functionality that you guys didn't offer through your appointment solution. Is that right? Yeah, we we have we do have a, a very baseline uh, appointment system that is uh, not half as half as uh, detailed as what you guys offer. So that's probably where that question came from. Um, hopefully, to answer it, yes, this would still. Uh, your day-to-day -day with the queuing system would not be affected. You would just have an added benefit of a lot more features and functionality on the appointment side of things. Awesome. Okay, we got a few more here. And then if, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to um, pop them into the question section or send them through the chat. We'll make sure to get them answered. Uh, the next one, and you might have touched on this briefly, but how long before an organization really starts reaping the benefits of an integration solu integrated solution like this, and what factors typically impact this? Well, yeah, I think I touched on, you know, early on, when you, the process to deploy these solutions is obviously going to vary depending on the organization and, you know, how complex the, the you know, specific implementation is, but from our perspective, you know, from whenever your go live date is, when you're flipping the switch and, and appointments start flowing in, there is an immediate impact to the business. Um, and again, there's a lot of actionable effects that happen after the fact, as you start to see that data, you start to see that demand flow in, there is, uh, you know, an action or a decision that's handed back to you as the business. What do you want to do with this information now? So some of it's dependent on the client, but, from you know the from the folks on the ground going back to you know talking about the the needs of you know the operations folks who who we work with a lot of the times there's an immediate uh, impact in that they can see what's happening in advance their teams know what's coming they're they're not you know kind of waiting for you know that invisible wave to hit them and and people to start walking through the door now again walk-ins still happen which is where why this partnership exists but I think it is it is a pretty immediate impact, at least from the appointments side of things. Um, and then what, you know, what impacts that from the appointment side of things? I would say to some degree, it's, you know, what percentage of your uh, customers you can, you can help direct to schedule appointments versus walk-in. So a lot of our clients have to figure out, you know, we can turn the solution on, but we've had these clients who haven't been booking appointments for, you know, years. They're used to walk-ins. How do we start moving those people over to, scheduling appointments instead of walking in. And some of our clients will, you know, try to find ways to incentivize clients to do that. You know, in some cases where, you know, you're talking about a hybrid appointment queuing system, I think Eric touched on this earlier, as the queue is sorting through the folks that are there, the people who have appointments are prioritized, right? So that's an incentive in and of itself. And I think kind of helps move people in that direction of adopting the uh, scheduling in advance. But Eric, I don't know if you have any insight here. No, I, th I think you nailed it. Um, first thing is, like, yeah, you, there is that fine line, right? Especially if you've only had walk-ins, right? There's been no appointment piece. Um, there, you do want to still be able to honor those walk-ins. Um, you want to move people over to appointments. So obviously you can distribute some of that traffic and plan for staffing and things like that. That's all very important. Um, so it can be uh, a gradual approach, right? It's not just boom, throw all these appointments out there. Um, and, and see how, see how it goes. Uh, obviously, you know, we slowly move those over um, and, and get people more inundated to that technology that you're offering them. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and you know, one other thing I wanna comment on on this is um, we do work with a lot of clients that, you know, they, they don't try to take on all of it at once. So, you know, when we work with large organizations, maybe they've got, they're distributed across a ge geographical area that could be, you know, a county, a state, a country. They've got dozens or hundreds of locations. Maybe they don't 
try and transition them all at once. You know, this doesn't work for every organization because of the way they're set up, the other technologies they're using. But some some clients want to try us with, you know, a subset and, and evaluate. Sometimes that's evaluating us and sometimes it's evaluating their own internal ability to, you know, adopt change and, and identify, do we need to alter this process as we start bringing the rest of our organization online? So there, there's a lot that can impact, uh, you know, what the, you know, how quickly impacts to these sorts of implementations are, are seen. But um, yeah, we, we've kind of seen it all and, and some clients can move real quick and see an immediate impact. And some clients, you know, they need to take it a little bit more slowly. Yeah, I really like this question, actually, just to put the icing on the cake. I mean, just the fact that you're implementing a solution like DaySmart or NemoQ really lets the customer know how much you care and value their time, right? Um, and that, I think, is very important to, to build that relationship with customers for repeat business, things like that. Um, so I think you can have an immediate value just for existing. Um, of course, we all we provide great analytics for you on both ends. Um, that you'd be able to utilize. Um, so I like that question a lot. Thanks, guys. Um, one more here. What types of resources does our organization need for a system like this? That's a great question. Uh, it, there's probably multiple layers to that one. Um, I, you know, we I think absolutely essential for something like this is you have to identify key stakeholders really as early on in a conversation as possible. And most of the time, those are going to be folks, again, with, you know, on the operation side of the business. Um, and so, you know, those would be resources that are essential. And you don't necessarily have to have decision makers involved the entire time, as long as those stakeholders can, you know, meet with us, kind of evaluate the business needs. You know, they, they know exactly what the requirements from the business, your business are, so that they can communicate them with us and we can kind of provide you know some uh, potential solutions or you know ask for clarifying questions and then those stakeholders can take those back to the decision makers and um, you know you guys can make a decision uh, about you know the right way to move forward for you so that's kind of like from a human resource perspective I would say you got you have to empower some people to come and explore this you know not necessarily to say this is the right fit but to come and ask the questions and evaluate you know what's the possible impact here um, I think Technical resources are great, but uh, at least Eric, I, I actually don't know this from your your end, but from a, the day smart side of things, you don't have to have technical experts in order to to implement our solution. You know, because we offer that out of the box customer interface, at the very most, you need someone who could put a link on your website, and most businesses can handle that. Um, even if there is a, you know, a large change management process to go through, if it's just putting a link on one web page, that's usually pretty palatable. Um, so you don't need to have a bunch of technical resources and developers, you know, on deck from our, our end of things. And then going forward after implementation, what we need is kind of the same thing from, you know, that the first thing I said, you have to have some key stakeholders who can continue to stay with us. You know, we have a great client success team here. And their job is really to evaluate how are we doing? How is this impacting your business? Are we meeting the requirements that you laid out in the beginning? You know, those benchmarks that we said we needed to hit. Uh, so we've got, we have stakeholders, key stakeholders on our end to help partner with our clients. And, and from my perspective, the client really needs to have those people as well, those kind of subject matter experts who are going to, you know, be the liaison between your business and our business so that we know, do we need to change something here? Do we need to try and improve? Do we need to kind of, you know, dial in on this one specific issue? Yeah, uh, just to touch on what Dave said, that's pretty much it. Operational people who are there, boots on the ground, um, you know, that see that day to day. Um, I know a question for Nemo Q might, you hear kiosk thrown around a lot. You might think, oh no, do I need a lot of technical resources, things like that. Of course, you know, we provide a turnkey solution. Um, when it comes to a kiosk can seem kind of daunting, but really all, all you need is, is some power uh, to turn it on and internet connection, right? Um, so it's our entire system's web-based, very, very minimal on the IT side of things. Of course, it's always nice to have those resources available to us, uh, but it's not required at all. Okay, and then, uh, thanks guys. So just one last question that came through here. Um, so how would you recommend using the free free real estate space that's now available in our offices and lobbies after implementing a system like this? 
I'm just kidding. That came from me, but um, <laughs> I'm probably kidding. I'm kidding but um, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. That's all the questions that we had. And so, in case anybody else has anything else, we can wrap up the Q and A session there. Okay. Well, thanks for handling that, Chase. And uh, I think we've got a final thank you slide here. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys again. We're super excited about this. We're excited about the clients that we're already working with today, and uh, really love to see you know, some growth here. I'd love to see some impact for some businesses because I, I don't think anyone has really solved the appointment and queuing problem perfectly in the past. And from our perspective, you know, we're two, two organizations that have focused on, you know, either end of those spectrums and this partnership has just come together really seamlessly. And I think we're really confident that we've got something great here. So yeah, just appreciate I, totally, being able to share it. I totally second that. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. Um, Dave, you as well. And I think you could reach out to either us or, or the folks at DaySmart um, and you'll be well taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, yeah, if there's no other questions, Chase, uh, I think we'll go ahead and wrap. But thanks again, everyone. Uh, and, and if you do think of questions after the fact, feel free to, to reach out like Eric said. So, Absolutely. Thank you guys again. Take care.